How's it going, everyone? Today, we're going to show you an excerpt from episode 37 of our Muzzleloaders podcast with Ethan Yazel, and we're going to be talking about faux striping. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell to receive notifications, and let's get into it. The faux striping, is that kind of like the, you know, like the tiger striping, for lack of a better term, that you see on, like some of the Petersolis have it and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So um, for maybe listeners who aren't as experienced with it in like, like traditional American long rifles, we saw really period and really accurate, uh, or sorry, we saw, uh, it was really common to see curly maple. So you had cu curved, you had curled wood grain in the stocks to add a lot of detail and really beauty to the rifles. But as we got into more of the industrial age and, uh, you know, that wood, that naturally curly wood was more expensive. And, but as we became, uh, as we began producing rifles more and more, uh, we started to come up with kind of fake ways to put that curl in there. And so a lot of the trade rifles coming out of the, the early and mid 1800s actually had that striping painted on uh, to simulate that quality natural wood grain. And it, uh, it became a really neat artistic flair, I think, for a lot of those rifles. Interesting. So people have been just doing that sort of painting, that's not a modern thing to replicate that. That's been going on for, you know, over, you know, 150 or better years. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen too many original uh, flintlocks. In fact, I haven't personally seen any original flintlocks that had that, um, that were like full stock long rifle, I should say. No, I was actually got to get hands on with an original unit that had been painted like that. Uh, from the 1830s or, or early 1840s. Uh, if you're interested in it, Mitch Yates uh, did a, a big blog post, I believe, on his website documenting his research on that technique and how he replicated it on a client's rifle. And that's what I'm going to be using uh, to hmm. try to replicate that in mine. That's cool. Yeah. And I think that is also part of the reason why people want to build a kit, you know, because um, there's that extra level of customization. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from our muzzleloaders podcast with Ethan Yazel of I Love Muzzleloading. And if you want to check out the full muzzleloader kit episode, you can click the card above or the links in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.